Hey guys, it's Mandels, here to ask which Generation 5 Pokémon are the most overpowered. Coming in as our fifth entry to the series, we'll be talking about the Pokémon of the Unova region, which is a region based off of none other than good ol' America. Gen 5 also so happens to be one of my all-time favorite generations right up there with Gen 2. That being the case, you can imagine I'm pretty stoked to be working on this video. I mean, it won't be easy. Unova introduced a ton of new Pokémon, coming in at a whopping 155 but I am up to the challenge. As always, for those of you new to the series, you can check in the description for a list of rules and disclaimers regarding this series. Also, if you want to catch up with the previous entries, click this delicious Italian dinner to do that. I, I, I don't know, I'm running out of stuff for you guys to click on, just, just, just do it. And with all of that being said, we can go ahead and roll the video. Number 10. Jellicent. Let's get real here for a moment. Were you ever really doubtful that Jellicent was going to be overpowered once you laid eyes upon this glorious mustache? Here at Mandels Incorporated, we take style very seriously, and Jellicent easily gets an A plus in that department. Seriously though, if you want more than just a sweet stash, Jellicent also earns himself the title of overpowered. Jellicent has a unique typing of Water Ghost, which provides it with a number of nifty things. This includes giving it access to Will-O-Wisp as well as the ability to block Rapid Spin. Jellicent's ability to be a spin blocker and keep entry hazards on the field makes it almost a staple Pokemon to have on your team. Jellicent can also be a pest by using Taunt, which is great too. Recover is also a hilariously annoying move that Jellicent has to its name, so that should be abused as well. The Pokemon's attack isn't really anything to write home about, but what Jellicent lacks in physical prowess, it makes up for an obnoxious utility. And it's got a mustache. Did I mention that part yet? Number 9. Chandelure. I know what you're thinking. Mandels, come on, how could a Chandelier Pokemon possibly be overpowered? Good question, viewer, but the answer to that is simple. Chandelure is an absolute bulldozer in terms of special attack. And after all, the Pokemon does absorb souls by hypnotizing targets with its flame, so naturally you'd assume it could deal some damage. Unfortunately, special attack is kinda where Chandelure's strengths end, since its other stats are kinda meh. However, a 145 base special attack more than makes up for that, and you'd be a fool not to be spooked by that. Chandelure also has a sweet immunity to fire, fighting, and normal moves. Honestly though, at the end of the day, Chandelure's best asset is the Pokemon's ability to knock out opponents ludicrously fast. And your pal Chandelure really becomes a threat once you throw a choice scarf into the equation. Once you do that, I guarantee you'll have full faith in Chandelure and you'll be convinced that the Pokemon was indeed overpowered. Number 8. Reuniclus. Hey kids, do you like biological warfare? No! Reuniclus does too! This bulbous bio blob blasts away opposing Pokemon with intense force. Don't let its happy face and cushiony, huggable appearance fool you. Reuniclus will take you out the minute you let your guard down. This is of course thanks to the Pokemon's 125 base special attack. And remember how I said the Pokemon looked cushiony? Well, it isn't half bad at absorbing damage with that HP stat, so I suppose the Pokemon's appearance makes quite a bit of sense. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, this also means that since the Pokemon looks like molasses, it tends to move at that kind of speed too. But this was also during a time where Trick Room was still somewhat relevant, and Reuniclus has full access to that move. This move makes its pitiful 30 base speed feel a million times more potent. Reuniclus also has the ability Magic Guard, which is flat out an amazing thing to have. Its move pool is also boundless, and on that note, I'm pretty sure you know why this thing should be feared. Number 7, Bisharp. It shouldn't take long for you to take a gander at this Pokemon and immediately think to yourself, huh, yeah, that thing, uh, that thing, it looks a little, little overpowered. And would you expect less from a Pokemon that would impale you instantly if you tried to give it a big ol' hug? Despite Bisharp looking like he would put the entire attack on Titan cast to shame, the Pokemon also works quite well mechanically. First off, Steel type, baby. It's debatably one of the best types to have due to its resistances, and Bisharp's got it. Next up, Boom. Attack. He's got it. This allows it to rip apart opponents pro Genji style with more moves than I care to count. Notable ones are Iron Head, Sword Stance, and the Devious Sucker Punch. And if you want to be even more of a devious little sh**, you can set up Substitute at the right time to get a few Sword Stances off. And then, when the other Pokemon doesn't expect it, BAM! Sucker Punch right to the Pokeballs. Bisharp does fight dirty, but it's also undeniably effective. Number 6. Conkledur. If you're a fan of the rippling biceps and manliness of Machamp, chances are you also fancy yourself a Conkledur. This testosterone-fueled madhouse could probably punch this universe and send it spiraling out of existence. Yeah, we're talking that manly. Most fighters smash you into concrete, but Conkledur? Screw that, he smashes you with the concrete. How's he capable of this, you might ask? Well, I'm sure it has something to do with that godly 140 base attack. Hey, he's gotta lift those columns somehow, dude. Also, you'd think a boring old fighting type like this would 
would have limited access to moves, right? The Wrong. Nash of course, he comes with all of your bread and butter fighting moves like Mach Punch and Drain Punch. However, the Pokemon can also use moves like Earthquake, Stone Edge, and all of the elemental punches. You know, typical god stuff. Conkledur's slow, but can outspeed you with Mach Punch. It's kind of fragile, but can heal with Drain Punch. This monster absolutely screams meta, and I rest my case. Number 5. Hexorus. Ah, uh, three evolution stage dragon type Pokemon. Practically every generation has got them. But the question is, is Gen 5's edition any good? Good god yes! I know it's probably crazy at this point to introduce a Pokemon with an even higher base attack, but I've got one for you. Hexorus sports a whopping 147, which is just disgustingly good. And since dragon moves are some of the best to begin with, a stab Hexorus is capable of pretty much one-hitting anything it darn well pleases. This does however mean the Pokemon has to outspeed the opposition, but this isn't incredible hard to do. A 97 base speed is solid, and though you might have to build Haxorus as a glass cannon, I say it's worth it with these numbers. I've gotta say, I just love Pokemon that are strong for these reasons. They're just not hard to figure out. Pick attacks that have high damage numbers attached to them, give them a good item, and finally unleash the pain. What, did you expect something different from a Pokemon with blades for a face? <laughs> Number 4. Ferrothorn. Most people would probably label this Pokemon as a Fortress clone, but I'm here to say no! No. I love the spiky menace. Don't you just want to hug it? Okay, bad example. Maybe this thing isn't that huggable, but that's also kind of the point. Ferrothorn is built for giving anti-hugs. No Pokemon wants to touch this thing, and that, my friends, is exactly Ferrothorn's winning strategy. If a Pokemon was to make physical contact with this bladed menace, it'd lose a chunk of its own health due to Ferrothorn's iron barbs. And it'd lose even more health if Ferrothorn was sporting a rocky helmet. On top of this, thanks to Ferrothorn's immense defenses, in some cases, the attacker will end up taking more damage than Ferrothorn itself, especially when you consider the fact that it has stealth rocks and spikes. This right here is a true vampire Pokemon. <laughs> Number 3, Volcarona. There are so many good things that Volcarona has going for it. The first being the fact that, frankly, the Pokedex makes this guy sound like a god. Statements such as, it is said that Volcarona's fire provided a replacement for the sun, and thought to be an embodiment of the sun, have already got me interested in the Pokemon. Next, it's the first bug fire type, and pulls off this combo really well. Okay, that's not an important detail, but it's dope, alright? If you'd rather talk about why Volcarona is a good battler, I suppose a good place to start is to talk about Quiver Dance. This amazing move generously raises special attack, special defense, and speed. And while on the topic of dances, Fiery Dance is one of Volcarona's moves that should also be praised. Not only does this move deal good damage and have a 100% accuracy, but it also has a good chance to raise Volcarona's already immense special attack upon use. As for weaknesses, you should look out for Stealth Rocks, I guess? But come on, let's get real, I'm sure you're willing to look past that. Number 2, Excadrill. Excadrill is probably the only non-legendary Gen 5 Pokemon that was seen as so strong that it was banished to the fabled Uber tier. You know, the place where the competitive community sticks Pokemon that have moves and stats that make them a completely unfair pick. And I don't know about you, but for me, unfair is just another word for overpowered. And Jiminy Christmas, Excadrill really is overpowered. This is partly due to the Pokemon receiving the blessing that is the Steel type, but that's obviously not the only reason. Excadrill is also blessed with Rapid Spin and immunity to poison and a ludicrous speed stat during sandstorms. This Pokemon is decently fast on its own, but if you have an ally whip up a sandstorm, Excadrill's Sand Rush ability kicks in and the Pokemon's speed doubles. This is terrifying to have to deal with, since now you'll be bombarded with Stab Earthquakes and Iron Heads. That is, of course, if you're lucky and don't have to deal with the Swords Dance buff as well. This Pokemon, man, it's... It's just all sorts of scary. Before I unveil the number one spot, here are a few honorable mentions. Darmanitan. Deals insane amounts of damage. Not at all a bad pick. Cafagragus. A crafty bugger that can do all sorts of annoying things with its huge defense stat. Gothitelle. It can be really difficult to properly deal with this Pokemon's ability, Shadow Tag. Zoroark. High attack and a unique ability make this Pokemon quite a threat. Mineshow. It's fast and powerful. Need I say more? Number 1. Hydreigon. If you're familiar with the fairy type, you're probably laughing at me right now considering that's Hydreigon's worst nightmare. But hold on, let me fill you in on something. Gen 5 didn't have fairy types, thus Hydreigon's kryptonite simply did not exist. Basically, I'm trying to tell you that Hydreigon doesn't have any hard counters. There simply wasn't one. Everything from the Pokemon's well-rounded stats to its insanely unpredictable move pool made Hydreigon feared by, well, everything. Sure, the Pokemon has weaknesses, but Hydreigon will usually have a move to deal with the very thing that it's weak 
weak to. The amount of ground that this Pokemon can cover is truly impressive. Another sweet tidbit that should be thrown out there is Hydreigon's Levitate ability, which gives it full immunity to ground moves. In addition, it's part dark, which grants immunity to psychic moves. There are many factors that make a Pokemon overpowered, but being able to cover this much ground is ultimately what takes the cake. Thanks for watching, everyone. While you're still listening, you should really consider following me on my Twitch account since I'll be starting up live streams again very soon. Links are in the description. Also, be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed the vid and hit that subscribe button if you are eager to see more Mandals. As always, there are more videos here for you to click on and watch if you're interested, and on that note, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!